So we have talked about rate expressions for reactions involving a single reactant in the previous video. Let's try finding the rate expression for this reaction wherein a tertiary halide is reacting with, with a strong base to produce a tertiary alcohol and a bromide ion. And you don't need to worry about the organic reac reaction itself. Uh, uh, the main thing that you, that you need to focus on are the results. So basically, uh, this would be something that would be given to you, say, on a problem. And uh, this is an experimental data. You don't need to uh, get it on your own. And what we have to do is to find the rate expression. So we do know, we do know that the rate can be written as, the rate can be written as some constant k, that's the rate constant, multiplied by, multiplied by the concentration of this tertiary halide to the power m, some power m, we don't know about it, and OH minus to the power n. And that would be what the rate expression would be. And we, you only need to figure out what M and N R, and and once once you figure out that out, you can also figure out K. That's that's pretty easy if you if you know things from this. So what we can what we can do is uh let's let's find the rate expression ourselves. So let's find M first. M, let's find M first. So basically. What we are looking for, we are looking for two equations of rate. So let's say rate 1 equals k some k times CH3, uh, 3 CBr uh, at, at uh, point 1 to the power m and then OH minus at point 1 to the power n, n sorry. And once you have that, once you have that, you can also do a similar thing. You can also write the rate 2. You, uh, we have done a similar thing like this in the previous video. And we are just continuing. We are expanding the limits that we had. We are expanding the scope of our discussion. Now, what happens if you, if you divide these two? If you divide rate 1 by rate 2, rate 1 by rate 2, you have... You have the expression CH3, CH3, 3, CBR1 over CH3, 3, CBR2 to the power M times OH minus at 1 over OH minus at 2 to the power N. That, that's just by dividing these two equations. Now, once you do that, notice you're you're still having two unknowns. So, if you want to find out n, you're somehow finding a way to such that this entire term of OHAs of hydroxides cancel out. And the only way that can happen is if you two, you choose two experiments wherein OH minus one and OH minus two are equal. So that means that I choose any two experiments wherein the OH minus concentration, the hydroxide concentration is constant, I can always find the rate. So let's take experiment number one and experiment number two. So in this case, in this case, in experiment number one, the rate one, this is experiment number one, by the way, and this is experiment number two. So rate one is the zero, 0.0. 0, 0, 5, 0, the one we have he written here and in experiment 2 you have you have 0 0.0 0, 0. 0. and that's the rate for, rate fraction for the for the other part now since you know that the OHAs minus hydroxides have equal concentration at both the points 1 and 2 you know that you don't need to worry about this term you just you just worry about the m term so, uh, the in the first in the first experiment, the concentration of the halide is 0 0.50, 0 0.50, and that of the second is is one one. And now you just have to solve for m. And if you do that, if you if you figure it out, let's just do it. So this would be equal to five into ten to the power negative three over one into ten to the power negative two equals 5 into 10 to the power negative 1 over 1. Just writing everything out in scientific notations helps. 
And if you do that, you are left with you are left with five times ten to the power negative one equals five times ten to the power negative one to the power m, and that just means that m is equal to one. Now you could have done the same thing. You could have done the same thing for so you now know that m equals one. So let me just write that down real quick. So m equals one. Now you want to find out n. Now in this in this expression that we had, we can just do the same. Let me just erase everything up. And now in this case, what we are looking at, we are looking at a way such that the ratio of the halides, the ratio wherein m is getting involved, that gets cancelled out. Just same as we did when we wanted to figure out what m was. Now we want to figure out what n is. So instead of m here, we have n. And now, and now, if you close the look at this, you need to figure out a way to make this to be equal to 1. And you don't want to make this to be equal to 1. So let's look at two experiments wherein the, the, the concentrations of the halides are equal. So if you look at, if you look at, um, let's take experiment number 4 and experiment number 5. In this, the halides have equal concentrations and the hydroxide is getting increased. So let's just write that down. So rate one, this is experiment number four and this is experiment number five. So rate four, so instead of rate one, so here one means four and two would mean five, just for sort of convention. So rate one in this case is 0 0.010. We are not talking about units here. Why? Since all of them are in the same units, you just essentially cancel everything up. So you don't need to worry about units here. Uh, and in the second experiment, also you have the same same concentration, same, same rate, so 0 0.010. And that is equal to, that is equal to, now you have the OHAs. Now in the hydroxide, so you have for experiment one, 0 0.1, and for experiment two, it's 0 0.20. So 0 0.1 over 0 0.2 to the power n. Now, if you solve this, this is equal to 1, and this is equal to 1 over 2. And the only way, the only way this can happen is if n equals 0. The only way the power of, of a number is equal to 1 is if the power itself is equal to 0. So now what you have proven is that m is equals 1 and n is equal to 0. Great. Now what you could have done is you could have figured out what k is. So I would now have to throw in a bunch of units. So uh, these both are in the concentrations are in moles per liter and the rate in this case would be in moles per liter second. Now um, what you could do uh, Let's take, let's take the rate expression. So the rate expression right now is rate equals K times CH3 tri CBR to the power one times OH minus to the power zero. And notice it doesn't make any, any difference if you write OH minus or not, uh, because the, con the changing of concentration of OH minus doesn't make any difference at all. And you could have also directly observed it from here as well. Let's just uh, discourse from, from, the, from the discussion that we are having. So uh, if you see here closely, in experiment three and experiment four, you changed you changed the values of you changed the values of the the hydroxide ion. And you noticed some results, you noticed some change. However, However, if you take, if you take, let's take two, two samples wherein, okay, let's take ex experiment number two and experiment number five. So in experiment number two and experiment number five, what do we have? In these two experiments, the, the first, the, the halide concentration is not changing. That is not changing. However, the hydroxide concentration is changing. Here it's 0 0.050 and here it's 0 0.20. But despite of the fact that the hydroxide concentration is being changed, the rate is not changing. So that means the rate is independent of what value of hydroxide you have. Now, if you want to find out the, the dimension, the, the unit of K, 
what you will do now is you will take some experiments. So let's let's take experiment number three for for this matter. Experiment number three. So let me just copy that down. So experiment number three is coming here. Uh, let's bring it down here. So Okay, now once we have the experiment three, what you can do is this, uh, you don't need to worry about this this part though, since this is just the hydroxide concentration and it doesn't even matter. Now you plug in for rate, you write 0 0.015 and that is equal to K times this concentration, 1.5, 1.5 to the power one. So now the, the unit of K, the rate is is we just talked about it is in the problem statement it's moles per liter second so moles per liter second and here here the the unit is moles per liter moles per liter to the power one okay now what you can do is you can you can take this entire stuff to the other side so k is equal to 0 0.015 moles per liter second over 1.5 moles per liter and if you divide that out you would get 10 to the power negative 2 second inverse and this is the the rate constant so hopefully by this video you get an idea a rough idea of how of how you can find the rate expression for for reactions involving more than one reactant the idea being to find something that fixed over two different experiments and use that as a template to divide two rate expressions and find out the orders. And you can do this for any number of reactants you have. The most common is, however, one and two reactants case. See you in the next video.